Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Willet Pot Still Reserve. Now when you see this bottle, what is the first thing that you think? Right, exactly. Too many tags. <laughs> so, of course, obviously it looks like a pot still. And this is modeled after one of Willett's pot stills, which ironically they use a column still a lot of the time too. Uh, but who cares? It's a really cool looking bottle. I'm sure you've seen it on the shelf. The actual uh, topper is made out of wood. It's really nice. And just everything about this bottle screams good design. And in fact, they've won several design uh, awards for it. So let me show you a little bit more of a close up of it. The history of the Willet Distillery is pretty cool, but it starts in like the late 1800s. But if you let me go back a couple hundred years earlier, I can at least tell you a little bit more. So in about 1640s or so, there was a guy named Edward Willett, and he wanted to become a pewter smith. So he didn't have any real experience, but he did have a cousin named Richard who was a pewter smith. So he went over and kind of trained with him a little bit, and they both came up with what's called a pewter mark. And it's very similar to a trademark. It's essentially just a mark of your trade. So um, this pewter mark ended up being this little symbol of a bird with a crown. And that was actually on those tags that I just threw. I'll, I'll pop it up here. So um, that is kind of the de facto symbol of the Willet Distillery. So just something to know. But in the late 1800s, there was a guy named John David Willet. And John decided to start a distillery. <laughs> so he had worked at a, a different distillery as the master distiller and thought, like most of them do, I could do this better. <laughs> so in eight, 1936, he actually broke ground on his own distillery. And in 1937, they put their first whiskey in a barrel. But uh, around 1940, they released their first whiskey. So, you know, as you can see, pretty standard progression. And that was called the Old Barnes. Old Bardstown Straight Bourbon Whiskey. <laughs> Some of these things, like I swear, it's hard to say the whole name all at once. Anyway, so Old Old Bardstown Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, things went fine for about 30 years or so. And then in 1970s, the energy crisis hit in the United States. And basically the Willett Distillery decided, hey, you know what, we can make a profit off of making ethanol instead of whiskey. And it's not like a huge changeover. So they did so for about 10 years and they did fine, but by the time that the energy crisis ended, they hadn't quite made enough to make it worth it. And uh, they had to kind of shut down the distillery, but they had a whole bunch of whiskey in the barrels and they continued to age it. They continued to sell it and just kind of keep things alive as far as the name goes, but they did essentially shut down the distillery for about 30 years uh, until about 2008 when they released this guy. And this was kind of a, a whole, resurgence. So if you want to think of it, there's two separate eras, eras of the Willet distillery. There's pre-2012 and post-2012. Post-2012 already had this out for four years, which when you think about what they had left, whatever. Long story short, sourced whiskey. So not an uncommon story and not really that big of a deal, but a little strange to hear from a distillery that was so well established. I can only think of a couple of other examples of, of similar kind of things. But it is good to know that they are currently making their own stuff. It's currently aging. And in fact, some of it is kind of slipping out. But for the most part, if you buy this, it's going to be mostly sourced. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the whiskey. So this is 47, 47% ABV. It is essentially a no-age statement, but it's presumed to be about 8 to 10 years old. And a lot of people think it comes from Heaven Hill, as far as the source. It is 72% corn, it is 13% rye, and it is 12% percent malted barley. I'm uh, sorry, 15% malted barley. And um, it used to be single barrel. So that's important to know, especially when you think of the fact that they were sourcing it, it does kind of make sense for it to be single barrel. But eventually, as they got more and more of this stuff and they were able, I mean, they had storage for it, they started making it small batch. And they found that they could get a more consistent flavor, as you would expect. And the small batches were about 12 barrels. So that's really not so bad. In fact, personally, I like small batch whiskeys because it gives you the characteristics of a single barrel, almost, and not quite that lower quality that you get with just the gigantic, like, seven, five, 700 barrels all in one thing. Just put it all in, in bottles, um, like some other, you know, larger distillers do. N nobody does 700 barrels. <laughs> I'm just exaggerating. So. Anyway, um, 
I'm happy to hear or happy to see that they're making it their own. They are trying to do their own thing. This, as I was talking about earlier, is a super iconic bottle. So when they do eventually put out their own stuff, they're already gonna have that, you know, that eye candy, the, the what do they call it? Like shelf attractiveness or something like that. Um, they're in a good place. So let's go ahead and nose this whiskey. <sighs> All right, so. I love the smell of this whiskey. I think this is a, a very good smelling whiskey. It's not very strong though. Um, it is, as I said, 47%, but it's not a very pungent smell. What you're getting and what it's leading with, we'll explain that. It starts with honey and then second is lemon. Um, then you have vanilla and then you have spice. So that should kind of define a little bit more what I'm talking about. When you, when you nose it, there's no burn. It's just very sweet and nice. All right, let's go ahead and take a sip. Cheers. So the taste here is unique. I'm gonna go unique. It's very good, I'll just put that out there. But the, the taste for me tastes like raw honey right off the bat, just very sweet honey though, but it's got that raw characteristic to it. Like if you were to take honey out of your, your pantry or whatever and literally just eat pure honey, that's more what I'm talking about than even just necessarily that sweetness that honey imparts on other things when you've baked it with honey. I'm just talking raw honey. So um, then it's got spice followed pretty closely behind that, which lasts for a little bit of time. And then I would say it ends with kind of a molasses and a toffee combination. So as you can see, kind of unique. <laughs> so what is my overall thought on this whiskey? Well, I like it. I like it enough to buy another one. I don't know that it's one that you necessarily have to have on you all the time. But I also know that if I left this on top of my bar, people that don't know whiskey would probably at least look at it and potentially want to try it. It, it is the best thing it has going for it is the way it looks. And thankfully the taste follows suit in that it's, it's good. Um, I know I'm giving it a resounding <laughs> thing here, but uh, where I land on it is kind of a soft buy it because it's $50. If it were 40 or even like 42, I would feel a lot better about suggesting that you buy this whiskey. Um, but at $50, I would buy it because it's cool uh, to, to kind of make up for that extra eight bucks. So anyway, a little, little strange, but I think that you should buy this whiskey if you want something different. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and I'll see you next time. Cheers. I'm having a sale. I am going to do a sale on my shirts and a sale on my coins. So with shirts, if you wanna get a shirt, look right below the video, there's a bar there, or you can go to the Teespring store that you can find in the description, enter the code free ship, all one word, and you'll get free shipping on any of the shirts that you want. Also, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a markdown on the coins. So I normally sell these for $10 a piece plus shipping. I'm gonna do $8 a piece plus shipping. And if you buy more than three coins, I'm gonna give you an extra discount. So if you want more than three coins, we can talk, but send me an email at thewhiskeydick at gmail.com. See you next week.